Of the doors that she found, 13 opened and closed. The other, the big carved brown wooden door at the far corner of the drawing room was locked. She said to her mother, where does that door go? Nowhere, dear. It has to go somewhere. Her mother shook her head. Look, she told Caroline. She reached up and took a string of keys from the top of the kitchen door frame. She sorted through them carefully and selected the oldest, biggest, blackest, rustiest key. They went to the drawing room. She unlocked the door with the key. The door swung open. Her mother was right. The door didn't go anywhere. It opened onto a brick wall. When this place was just one house, said Coraline's mother, that door went somewhere. When they turned the house into flats, they simply bricked it up. The other side is the empty flat on the other side of the house, the one that's still up for sale. She shut the door and put the string of keys back on top of the kitchen door frame. You didn't lock it, said Coraline. Mother shrugged. Why should I lock it, she asked. It doesn't go anywhere. Coraline didn't say anything. It was nearly dark now, and the rain was still coming down pattering against the windows and the blurring the lights of the cars in the street outside. Coraline's father stopped working and made them all dinner. Coraline was disgusted. Daddy, she said, you've made a recipe again. It's leek and potato stew with tarragon garnish and melted Gruyere cheese, he admitted. Coraline sighed. <sighs> then she went over to the freezer and got out some microwave chips and a microwave mini pizza. You know I don't like recipes, she told her father. While her dinner went round and round and round, the little red numbers on the microwave oven counted down to zero. If you tried it, maybe you'd like it, said Coraline's father. She shook her head. That night, Coraline lay awake in her bed. The rain had stopped. She was almost asleep. Something went t -t 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 -t. She sat up in bed. Something went <coughs> Coraline got out of the bed and looked down the hall, but saw nothing strange. She walked down the hallway. From her parents' bedroom came a low snoring, that was her father, and an occasional sleepy mutter, that was her mom. Coraline wondered if she dreamed it, whatever it was. Something moved. It was a little more than a shadow, and it scuttled down like the darkened hall fast, like a little patch of night. She hoped it wasn't a spider. Spiders made Coraline intensely uncomfortable. The black shape went into the drawing room, and Coraline followed it in, a little nervously. The room was dark. The only light came from the hall, and Coraline, who was standing in the doorway, cast a huge and distorted shadow onto the drawing room carpet. She looked like a thin, giant woman. Coraline was just wondering whether or not she ought to turn on the light when she saw the black shape edge slowly out from behind the sofa. It paused and then dashed silently across the carpet towards the farthest corner of the room. There was no furniture in that corner of the room. Coraline turned on the light. There was nothing in the corner, nothing but the old door that opened onto the brick wall.